Hello everyone and welcome back to Tickets Basket. I am really really sorry for being late in publishing the videos in this series, but uh, in the previous period I was under too much pressure, I almost can't handle things during the day. But I promise like, I will do my best to achieve uh, the most or the best productivity to publish as much videos as I can in the upcoming period. Right now, before we start creating the repositories and the services and other things, let me explain the full architecture of our API, how it's going to be. So, basically, the general idea of uh, the pattern that we are going to follow is to make our application based on layers. Each layer will be totally isolated from other layers. So, in case in the future we want to make any maintenance or to change anything, uh, the application will be just based on layers, each layer will be based on abstraction and other layers. So in this case, uh, zero code will be changed in other layers. We will just change what we want to change in a specific place. So I will start from the bottom to the top. First, we will have the data source and the code that is going to deal with this, which is in our case, SQL, Azure SQL Server, uh, the code that's going to deal with or the framework is going to be entity framework core so this one is the deep layer so at the top of this we will have set of repositories for example events repository profiles repository tickets etc those repositories will wrap the functionalities of the entity framework and provides it to the top layer as an abstractions so in this case the top layer will be based on uh, abstraction repositories so in this case our application won't be based specifically on entity framework so in the future if we decide to change entity framework for example we want to use pure Ado.net, or maybe you want to move to another data source like azure cosmos db in this case what we want to choose or to change maybe we don't need to change anything we just can create a new implementation for those repositories for cosmos db and that's it so in this case this is the, the second layer we have, repositories. Then we will put all these repositories together in one place and they provide it to the services layer as, and sorry, this one called unit of work. We can say that unit of work is something similar to the DB context and entity framework. You know, when you want to communicate with the tables or with your SQL data source and entity framework, you create an instance of DB context which contains all or set of properties of type DB sets which are basically the tables in the C sharp. So in this case, you from the DB context, you access all that data, like tickets and some stuff. So unit of work will do the same thing. We will provide all the repositories, like the tickets, profiles, events, etc., to the services layer, but they are going to be abstractions as well. For example, we will have I unit of work interface. And then we'll have implementation, which is going to be uh, the repository there, the implementation of that repository will be specifically for entity framework. But what's going to be provided to the top layer and interface of iUnit of Work. Now, after the unit of work, there's going to be business services. Here, all the logic and the magic will happen here. We have the business validation, you'll have the business rules and all the stuff. So the services here, will communicate with the unit of work. To, so in this case, they can read and write from and to the data source in an um, abstraction, let's say, uh, pattern. So, and, and then as well as for this, the business services will be based also on some external services. For example, a storage service that will communicate with the Azure Blob Storage. We will have mail service, so this one send emails to the customers or the organizer when something happens. And we have also another service called SignalR for implementing real-time functionality in our application. Those will be separated, as I've said, external. And then the business services will use or leverage some of them. So in this case, uh, those are the business services. And on top of them, or the top layer in general is going to be the controllers in our API. Our, the controllers will be based on uh, the, those services. So the events controller here, uh, sorry for the naming, 
this one should be tickets and this one should be events here, profiles or etc. So uh, the events controller here will have an instance of I event service, also an abstraction or an interface, and it will make only one function call to make all that business magic or business logic, business stuff will happen here in the controller. So in this case, all the levels will be, or all the layers will be loosely coupled from each other. All the layers will provide an, uh, let's say, a gateway for the next layer, but as an abstraction, as an interface. So if you want to create unit tests and you create mocking in the unit tests, that's going to be very, very easy because all the layers are just based on abstractions based on interfaces, if you want to make any change or any maintenance in the future, for example, in some logic, you, will, you can just make that change here. If you want to change the data source, you can just create new limitations for your repositories. So in this case, we have very, very powerful architecture that actually is scalable for the future if you want to add new things, if you want for, to maintain things, or if you want to create unit tests, Basically, unit tests out of the scope of this course, but we could make another course for it. Learn how you can use the unit tests and also use mocking frameworks. So in this case, you feel confident about what you are creating and you are or what you are providing for your customers. So this was a general overview. I hope that you got the idea of uh, what I've said. And right now, the next video will start implementing. Uh, the repositories that will handle the entity framework uh, core. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.